What's up everybody, if you that don't know me, my name is Chris, AKA Mr. Groat, and I'm back with another video. I had a couple people reach out to me recently, they're either in the harvesting process, drying process, trimming process, or curing process, and they didn't have the tools needed to do the job. So in this video, I figured I would show you some of the tools I use. Right here, you can see all the tools that I have. Actually, I don't know if the camera is cutting that off or not, but I have a lot of the tools needed for the processes laid out right here, and uh, we'll go over them in this episode. But before we get to the episode, I'd like to give a quick shout out to our sponsor. Thanks to Mars Hydro for sponsoring this video. Mars Hydro currently has a summer sale going on, and there are several items on sale, such as grow lights, grow tents, and grow tent kits. The prices are already decreased on their website, and you can stack my discount code, Mr. Grow It, on top of it to save more. Stock is limited, so when they sell out, the sale will end. The website link and discount code are on the bottom right hand corner of the screen, and I'll also provide this information down in the description section below. All right, so getting into it, uh, one of the first things to look at is harvesting or pre-harvest actually, before you harvest the plant. Uh, some people use a tool to check the color of the plant. Now, of course, this is gonna depend on which plant you're growing. There are some plants that have resin glands that have different colors and they need a microscope in order to look at the color of those resin glands. Now, fortunately these days, uh, this will do it. It's a smartphone. This is the Pixel 5 smartphone. All you have to do really is take a picture of the plant close up, then zoom into that picture, and you're actually able to see the colors of the resin glands. A lot of people don't know about that. A lot of people instead, what they'll do is they will buy something such as a microscope. So this one right here is a uh, jeweler's loop actually, and it is uh, LED. So there is an LED button on there. There's two different, I think it's a 10X and a 30X, I believe for this one, uh, but the LED light comes on and then you basically just kind of hold it towards the, the plant and then you gotta kind of look in and get a view on it. Now, unfortunately with this type of tool, if you have a shaky hand, it's not gonna be ideal. I've had had people reach out to me in the past that say their hand is too shaky and they can't get a clear view. So if your hand is shaky, you might not want one of these. Uh, side note on this, this is also used to inspect plants for pests, for example, really good tool for that. So this is a jeweler's loop. There's several different brands. This one is by Happy Hydro. There's this one right here. This one is by Vivo Sun. So kind of very similar, kind of pulls out like this. Looks like the LED automatically goes in there. They have a 30X, 60X, and a 90X on this one. By the way, I'll link all the tools that I show in this video down in the description section below, so you can easily click on that to get to it. But again, for this one, if you have a shaky hand, it might not be ideal. You might not be able to get that clear view. So this one right here is another alternative. This is the one that I personally like to use when I am using a microscope. And this one is really meant more for to be placed onto a table, right? So a flat surface, place it right down. You get that clear, steady view. I believe this one is a 30 to 60X, if I'm not mistaken. And you can kind of adjust it here. There is a button for LED as well, so you can get a clear view. Uh, but basically you'd be snipping off a piece of the plant, placing it onto a table, and then placing the microscope over it, and then adjusting that way. Now downside is, of course, you have to clip off a piece of the plant. But again, if you have shaky hands, the other options aren't there for you this is an alternative. Uh, one other thing, if you do have a smartphone, you could get a Happy Hydro Nug Shot. This one has a few different lenses. Uh, alone, it is the macro lens. Uh, underneath that, this is the wide angle lens, and then you've got the fisheye lens. Again, you're gonna need a steady view for this. Um, so if you do clip this onto your smartphone, you may actually wanna put your phone onto a tripod and then you'll be able to get a steady, clear view on that one. So that's pretty much pre-harvest. Then we actually get into harvesting the plant, cutting down the plant. Uh, the main tool I use for that are garden shears. These ones are by Vivosun. And uh, they're pretty good. Real, If you have a real thick stalk you need to cut through, these ones will get right through it. Uh, I actually use these shears for, I have palm trees outside that are um, small height and I am able to cut through the palm tree leaves. And so I get multiple uses out of that. It's not just uh, growing my indoor plants. I also can trim outdoor plants with this. So I did actually have a cheap Chinese brand of this. Uh, it was like a red handle. I forget the name brand on it. I think it was like 11 bucks on Amazon. It did actually malfunction. It 
it ended up breaking in this area. So I had to throw those away. These ones I've had for, uh, let's see, a year and a half now. And uh, they've been working pretty good, so no complaints there. The other alternative to cutting down your plant, a lot of people will use just regular trimmers, these spring-loaded trimmers. This one is by Hydro Farm. So these will work. If you have real thick stock, though, you're gonna have to you know, spend some muscle <laughs> working on to get in through there. And then some stocks might be so thick that you can't even get through it with these. So I don't use these anymore to harvest. I mean, if you're cutting individual branches, you could probably get through them a lot easier. But yeah, if you're trying to cut that main stock, it can be very difficult. So that's why I recommend the, the shears over these ones. But there are so many different companies that make these spring-loaded ones. I have one by Hydro Farm, Vivo Sun, they have one. They're all pretty much the same. Happy Hydro, these ones, I like the color on these ones. I believe Happy Hydro now has a titanium blade. So it's supposed to help with either cleaning it, I believe is easier, or less gunk up. If you have a plant that kind of gunks up your trimmers, there'll be less chances with the titanium blade. So that's an option. They yeah, actually, these ones are the titanium blade. I can see it right here. Those three that I just showed you are straight tip. I also have these AC Infinity ones, which I haven't even taken out here. I just got these. So I can't really tell you the quality. They look great. Seem pretty standard. I'm not sure how the blade holds up on these, but these are new. AC Infinity is one of those up and coming companies that produce real quality products. So I'm excited to use those for the first time. All the ones I just showed you are straight tip trimmers. Um, they do have, I'm not sure if you can see this real well, this is a curved tip trimmer. This is by Happy Hydro. So you can kind of get in, you know, on some flowers that you're trimming, kind of having this curved tip can be beneficial. So sometimes I'll use these, but for the most part, I'm just using the straight tip ones. Now, one downside to all the spring-loaded ones I just showed you is, uh, you know, if you're trimming for several hours, it can cause strain on your hand, unfortunately. Now, it's good that when you're releasing, it's less stress there, but when you're pushing in, there's definitely some strain. I personally have kind of shied away from these in recent harvests, actually not recent, for the past couple years or so. I really go towards these ones right here. These are by Happy Hydro. There's no spring on them. There's really a lot less strain in my opinion than the spring loaded ones. So that's another option for you. When you're trimming, I like to use gloves. These are just standard gloves. These are by Vivo Sun. I don't think they even make these anymore, but there are some that are very, very similar. Um, on Amazon. These ones I can use harvest after harvest. I know there are some people out there that prefer the disposable ones. Those are like the latex disposable gloves. That way, once you're done trimming, you just throw them away and then you get a new pair. But I personally like to reuse where I can. And so these ones have been uh, pretty good over the last few harvests. Getting into drying, there are several different dry environments that you can use. There are now tents specifically for drying with drying racks built in. Some people just use their grow tent. Some people will use their bathroom. Some people use cardboard boxes to dry. And they'll basically just hang them on coat hangers, for example. They'll just either clip them on to a coat hanger or um, yeah, whatever they can think of, a string across the box and then hanging on the string. So there are creative ways that you can create a dry environment. A drying rack is something that folks often use. I don't have one here to show you, but I'll put one on the screen right now. This one is by Happy Hydro. And I believe these come in several different layers. Now the downside with these racks, from my experience, I have used them in the past, is that um, some flowers, uh, you know, can kind of sink in if you keep them on one side. So rotating them has been kind of beneficial for me at least in the past. So drying rack is an alternative compared to just hanging them on coat hangers, for example. Oftentimes the dry environment needs to be controlled humidity wise. I personally live in a very dry climate, so I will use a humidifier. I'm not sure if you can see that humidifier right there. Yep, you should be able to. That's a humidifier I've been using for the past six months, I think, eight months. It's a smart humidifier. And that one is actually app controlled as well. So, uh, you know, you download an app on your phone, you can turn it on off, you can adjust the humidity percent, the set point through the app. It'll tell you when the water is out and needs to be refilled. It'll tell you when it needs to be cleaned. So I'm actually really loving that humidifier. I bought three of those for my grow tents and lung room. And then I take it and I use it in my dry environment as well. There are so many different humidifiers out there. That's just the one that I use. Now on the flip side, if your environment is too humid and you need to reduce the humidity, a dehumidifier would be what you use for that. Again, I live in a very dry climate. I've actually never needed to use a dehumidifier, but I'll link one down in the description section below for you. In the bottom of the dry environment, I like to put an oscillating fan. This is a small eight inch one. Just put it on the ground and let it blow back and forth. That way there's some air movement within the dry environment. Now there's this one, uh, also a clip on option that clips on directly to the side of a grow tent, for example, the pole of a grow tent. I'll link that one down below as well. 
And then monitoring the temperature and humidity in your dry environment. There's several different temperature and humidity monitors out there. This one's an Accurite cheap. I think this was like 10 bucks, 11 bucks on Amazon. That's gonna tell you the temperature, humidity, and then the high and low values for the past 36 hours, if I remember correctly. The downside to this is if you have this in your dry environment, you need to open up the environment in order to see what the levels are at. So it could disturb your environment. For example, I'm in the dry climate. When I have a humidifier in there, it raises it up. When I open up my dry environment, well, that escapes, it lowers the humidity. So then closing it back up, it needs to raise back up. So there's a little bit disturbance in the humidity. Now, is that gonna ruin your flowers? Probably not, right? But still, uh, there is an alternative option, which is what I use is the sensor push wireless temperature and humidity monitor. So this is actually gonna do temperature, humidity, VPD, and it actually does dew point as well. So I use this in my garden while my plants are growing, and then I also transfer it over to my dry environment and monitor the temperature and humidity uh, in my dry environment with this. This is just Bluetooth, but there is a Wi-Fi adapter that you can connect to so you can see the temperature and humidity wherever you are. And this hooks up directly to your smartphone. So there is an app that you download and um, it gives you historical data as well. So you can see what the temperature and humidity was, kind of a line graph up and down, up and down for the past hour, for the past day, for the past week, for the past month. And you can do certain set points. It'll give you alerts, notifications. So if your humidity is too low, you'll get an alert on your smartphone that you need to take action. Same thing, humidity is too high, you get alerted and you would be able to take action from there. Also has set points for the temperature, VPD, dew point, so on and so forth. So I really like this, I've been using this for four years now, roughly. There are other monitors on the market like this. Uh, Pulse has a monitor. I do have the Pulse monitor as well. I've been trying it out for the past several months now. I do actually prefer the sensor push over the regular Pulse monitor though, mostly due to the actual app just working better in my opinion. All right, on to curing. So you get your standard mason jar here for curing. A lot of people use this. I still use a, a glass mason jar for curing. As long as it's airtight, sealed, that's a good curing container. This is a 32 ounce wide mouth, the wide mouth specifically so you can stick your hand in there. This is going to hold uh, about an ounce of flowers. It depends on the density of the flowers, right? So if you have real dense flowers, for example, it could look like it's about three fourths full, maybe even a little bit less than that. If you have more airier flowers, less dense stuff, it could actually fill this up to the top. You might potentially even need another container, but a lot of people use these with success. Uh, the alternative to that, there's so many different alternatives to this as far as curing containers. Uh, one that I use in particular is the Sea Vault. So I got the Sea Vault right here. These things are kind of clipped down airtight seal all across. Um, now, one thing I really like about these is if you have a lot, right? So I believe this size right here is gonna be able to easily store three to four ounces of flowers. Like I mentioned, the glass containers are gonna do uh, one ounce each roughly. In the curing process, oftentimes you're doing a burping process. So you're removing the containers, shaking it around. Some people do it multiple times a day. Some people do it once a day, so on and so forth. But if you have multiple ounces with the glass jars, you're gonna have to open up multiple jars and it's a little bit of a process here if you put three four ounces in one container it's a much quicker process you're just doing one burp so when I harvest a whole plant, for example, usually I get three to four ounces of flowers per plant. It'll just go in one container. And then there's just one burp that happens, uh, you know, however many times a day it needs to happen. Now in these containers, having some sort of monitor in there is beneficial. There are a couple different ones. I used to use these ones right here. You can get them super cheap on eBay. I think they're like two bucks a piece less than that on eBay, depending on the quantity you buy. They're also on Amazon as well. Now there's some accuracy issues with some of them that I've received. I believe you can actually calibrate them, but I'm not 100% sure. So I can't say that I fully recommend this one, but there are digital ones. This one's not on right now. It needs batteries. The batteries it takes is the LR44s. Two of them you need to get the replaced, but it would be a digital hygrometer and you're able to see what the humidity is. And also I believe in the bottom corner is the temperature as well. And then you simply place them in the jar or container that you're using to cure, and then you'll be able to monitor the humidity of it. So that's pretty much all the tools I have here for harvest, dry, trim, and cure. I'm trying to think if I'm forgetting anything. Are there any tools that I didn't mention that you use for those processes? Let me know down in the comment section below. If you enjoyed this video, please click that thumbs up button, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and I will leave it at that. Until next time, peace.